England secured a place in the round of 16 of the 2018 uh, World Cup in Russia. Um, even before they'll, they'll, they need to go and play Belgium in their third and final game uh, with a pretty impressive 6-1 victory over Panama. Uh, realistically, the game uh, was pretty much over in, um, in the first 45 minutes, maybe even before that. Panama having a really, really rough time uh, against England, uh, giving away silly penalties, two penalties, in fact, uh, both of them converted by Harry Kane. Um, who then went on in the second half to add what he described later as the uh, perhaps the luckiest goal of his career when Ruben Loftus-Cheek's goal bound, the shot caromed off his ankle and passed uh, Pinedo in the uh, Panama goal. Anyway, they all count. It's a hat trick. He's only the third England player in history to get a hat trick at a World Cup after Jeff Hurst and uh, Gary Lineker. Uh, two goals uh, from uh, uh, from John Stones and uh, one for uh, Jesse Lingard rounded out the scoring for England. For Panama, hey, how about that? Felipe Valoy coming on as a substitute, 37 years of age, getting the goal. He's the third oldest goal scorer in history in a World Cup after Roger Miller and Gunnar Gren. It was an absolute goal fest between England and Panama. But shout out to Panama, Stevie Nicol, for getting their first it was a World Cup goal. It was a little one-sided. Exactly. Six goals to one is what the scoreline was at the end of the day. England just absolutely having a time with all those goals. So, Stevie, my question is, because when we have to bring down some of the hype, we like to bring you in from the Scotsman's <laughs> perspective. Were England just that good or was Panama just that bad? Both. You know, at the end of Perfect the day, storm. at the end of the day, you, you can only beat what's put in front of you. You know, we've been talking this World Cup about how some of the bigger teams have struggled, your Argentinas and your Germanys, uh, in games where they should have just pretty much should have been easy. Mm -hmm. Well, England's made it look easy because going forward, they've been sharp, they've taken their chances, um, they've just done everything right as an attacking force. The only problem I would I would suggest they have to hold on to is that they haven't played anybody yet. In all honesty, Panama, they're not in the same league as England. Uh, Tunisia, not in the same league as England. So they haven't been tested defensively. And that would be the only thing I would say. If I'm an England fan, I would say, OK, hold on, let's not get carried away. Scored plenty of goals, but we haven't really been tested at the back yet. And right. you know what? Belgium's next. Well, that's exactly what I was going to point out now, because if we have a look at the table and see just how the point standings are looking, you will see that England there at the top, of course, because they've got a very nice goal difference. Belgium, of course, scoring freely as well, Stevie Nicol. That's the next encounter. That's what we want to see. How do you see this one going? Because I know you also highlighted that Belgium as well looking good going forward, yep. but at the back they have their issues. Yeah, you've got two sides um, in exactly the same position. Um, scoring plenty of goals, but defensively not being tested. So, pretty clearly, it's going to be a battle of the, the back. Uh, I was going to say the back fours, but England, of course, play with a three, as do, as do Belgium. So, whoever defends the best will win this game because both sides will throw players forward um, and try and create chances. All right, well, we look forward to that one. We've been loving the goal fest so far. At least I have. Yeah, me too. All right, thanks. Unfortunately, it was for England. But. Unfortunately, it was for England, but we're not biased at all. Thanks no, so much to Stevie Nichol. Make sure to catch ESPN FC later on on ESPN+. Plus. Stevie Nichol joining me as we look back on that matchup between Japan and Senegal at the World Cup today. 2-2 is how it finished. Mm. Even Steven, Stevie Nichol, do you think that was a fair result? Yeah, I think it was the right result. Um, you know, Japan, for me, are more about grit and determination and sticking at it than, than actual pure quality. Mm. Uh, and Senegal, you know, we gave them a lot of praise in the first game against Poland for how disciplined they were and how, how they had such a good team shape defensively. Well, that didn't really apply today, I thought. You know, I think, I think the biggest problem was they lacked concentration at the right times. Uh, and particularly the goalkeeper, I thought, in dying goal, looked shaky. Uh, was definitely at fault for, the, for Japan's equaliser, the second one. So I think they should be happy with the point, you know, if somebody had given them four points after two games against Poland and Japan, they would have been happy. But at the end of the day, I think the winners are, are either Colombia or Poland. Oh, I was just going to get that because, of course, we were waiting that fixture. And we're saying that this group mm. looks like one of the more harder ones to predict. It seems to be pretty wide open. But people, we have been praising Senegal. Shaka Hisap has him as one of his dark horses right. in the entire tournament. How far 
could you see them going then if they do manage to get their defensive issues and that concentration back? Uh, again, it'll depend on the draw. Um, I think we saw the real Senegal today. You know, the, the Senegal against Poland that, that was so disciplined and together and had good team shape. It was very, it was very kind of European the way they played. But I think today we saw really what they're all about. If you mesh them together, it's just not going to be enough. All right. Well, wow, that's a bit dreary, but okay. <laughs> I've been oh, liking Senegal. Me. They're quite exciting. You ask me. Hey. Next round. Next round. Uh, next round. I believe we'll get through. All right. Thanks so much to Stevie Nicol. Make sure to catch ESPN FC later on on ESPN+. Plus. Now, it just wouldn't be the World Cup if we didn't tackle all of the games in World Cup predictor, Stevie Nicol. Right. I know you love this so much. Yes. Oh, so you get it's it the ready. world's game. Ready to go, exactly, especially because we're approaching the final round of group matches, so things could get juicy, or not so much like in the case of this first one. Saudi Arabia, yeah. Egypt. Uh, it's a bit of a battle of the defeated, let's say. Uh, Saudi Arabia, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm just not sure where they're going to get a goal from. Uh, Egypt, on the other hand, they got Salah back fit. He's going to be the difference. I am going to go for Egypt to win this game. Believe it or not, I think in about every predictor I've just chosen Egypt, but I guess they just didn't choose themselves. So I'm just going to carry on and keep choosing Egypt. Yes, I've been choosing Egypt for Carry every on blown predictor. It, right? <laughs> They've just blown it. All right, well, this is a juicy one where mm. we want to see a nice result. Uruguay, Russia. Right. Now, this is the first real test for Russia. Yes. Um, listen, they have, they have surprised us already, uh, but it would be a surprise for me if they did beat Uruguay. Um, you know, particularly their strength seems to be Zuba up front. Now, without being disrespectful, he's, he's a big lad. He holds it up. Um, he's not the most technical of <laughs> players. Uh, and that's what Russia are pinning their hopes on for me. I mean, you've got Cavani Suarez up front for Uruguay. Uh, Uruguay gets this one done. I think I'm going to agree with you on this one, Stevie. I believe that it is going to be a pretty stern test for Russia. They already know that they pretty much have found themselves in the next round. So I'm going to go with Uruguay. Right. Iran, Portugal, because this is, well, these next two fixtures actually are very juicy as well. You know, I'm going to go for a draw here. <gasps> I'm, I'm going to say that Ronaldo scores again for Portugal, but I'm actually going to say Iran score. Now, Iran haven't actually had a shot on target or a shot at goal yet in this World Cup. They did one again, but it was a known goal. And I'm going to say they break the duck and they score. I'm going to say this as a surprise draw. A surprise draw. I'm yep. going to fight you on that one, Stevie Nicola. I'm going to go with Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal to continue flying Take high because they know. That's not the e that is the easy. Maybe we'll see about this one. Spain, Morocco. Oh, so not that much, but Morocco are pretty much a stubborn team as well. But forget about it. Forget about it. Come on. <laughs> you didn't even Be real. To give me an explanation there's on that reason, one. There's a reason Morocco are bottom of this group. Yep, all right, well, I'm going to go with Spain as well on this Spain. one. Yeah, yeah, yes, but I'm going to choose Portugal <laughs> probably to score more goals. So then, no, I'm going to choose Spain to score more goals. They'll top the group. Portugal will finish second. Okay, and we won't have to go to fair play points. That will make Stevie Nicol very happy. Please no. Please, <laughs> Thanks so much to Stevie Nicol. Make sure to continue watching World Cup Predictor on ESPN FC on ESPN+. Plus. To me, in the match against Germany, there was a pretty clear standout. Hector Herrera. Yes. I think in my... Player ratings, I gave him a nine, and he was the only nine I, I gave out. Was there, he was very quiet in this game against South Korea. Was there, though, a player that for you stood out as, at least among the field players, kind of the, the key person in this victory over South Absolutely. Korea? Absolutely. Carlos Vela. Mm. How could he not? Yeah. Uh, when you have a team that sits back and stays com compact and they're composed and disciplined, the only way to unlock a team like that is 1v1. You have to win a 1v1 battle. And whether it was his ability to thread a ball or his ability to take somebody on or to retain possession and draw numbers to him so he can lay it off and then all of a sudden spring somebody at a different point of attack, Carlos Vela did that. And in the, the amount of confidence Carlos Vela is playing with at this moment, there was, there was this play in the second half where I knew exactly what Carlos Vela was going to do because that's the confidence he's shown in MLS. Be it yeah, the much, curler, the left-footed curler, curler being at the top a much, of the box, much yeah. different opposition, much, the level's different, but the confidence is seeping through this player. He cuts it, and you knew he was going to shoot. You knew exactly what he was going to do. He sees things so clearly right now. So you're saying MLS didn't ruin Carlos Vela? I would argue that what Carlos Salcedo did, what Carlos, Carlos Salcedo, Salcedo okay. has done, where he went from not playing in Mexico on a U-20 team, mm -hmm. okay, Tigres, and then he goes to RSL, 
wins himself a starting position, gets noticed for the national team, then gets purchased by Chivas, has now opened the doors for more Mexicans to see MLS as an opportunity to get on national team radar. Carlos Vela is the same. Carlos Vela has shown you can stay and have a high level. If you do well in MLS, doesn't matter. Carlos Vela is doing well, partly because LAFC is doing well. And this goes into play with Jonah and Gio. When, when your team doesn't do well, it's very hard, if you're not in a position that's a goal scorer, to kind of stand out. So they, by association, they say, well, LA Galaxy isn't good, they're not good. Well, LAFC is pretty good, and Carlos Vela is pretty damn good. I don't think we can brush past Vela's, and I'll just pick this word because it fits, maybe it's not the best, complicated history with the national team and, and what a performance like what he did against South Korea, I think like also you could say what he did against Germany means in light of that. So he doesn't play in the 2014 World Cup despite the fact that he was absolutely not just one of the best 23 Mexican players on the planet, I would say one of the best 11 Mexican players and maybe one of the top two or three Mexican players on the planet uh, in the 2013-2014 season, the run-up to the 2014 World Cup. The long, the short story is he's had a falling out with the Federation after a, another one of the party scandals in 2010, I believe it was, 2011. And because of the way he felt he was treated by the Federation, he kind of, you know, took himself out and wanted to focus on his club career. And he did amazing things at Real Sociedad, and, and he should be um, applauded for that. But there was a lot of people who thought, wow, you know, this guy's not patriotic because he didn't want to play for the Mexican national team in 2014. And then a lot of those same people were so quick to label him as a greedy, lazy, not soccer-obsessed, selfish, yes. selfish guy when he came back uh, to LAFC and, and Major League Soccer. Not so ambitious. He's all had these a, words a really thrown. complicated relationship, not just with the Mexican national team, with the, the, the Mexican fan base and, and the Mexican press. And that moment before the penalty kick, when at least everybody in a Mexico jersey in the stadium is chanting his name, it's, uh, I'm sorry, man, that was, that was pretty cool, you know. The football is the revanchas, no? Yeah. And that el was, football you know, siempre, in the football, siempre hay revanchas. Yeah, you know, you always have that second go, that second bite, yeah. that, that redemption story. Yeah. I did see a lot on social media of the, this is eight years too late for Carlos Vela. Like, this could have been in 2010 for Carlos Vela. 14, you mean? No, well, 2010, people thought he, should, he could have done, done something in 2010. Oh, okay. You know, he's because, he, I mean, you remember, he was at Arsenal, then he went to Sociedad, and at one point he was one of the best players in La Liga at yeah. Sociedad. This is what people feel about him. It's almost like a unfulfilled prophecy when it comes to Carlos Vela. It's unfair. It's unfair to Carlos Vela. Every player is different. You know, if if we're always going to be put up to the standards of everybody else and and, and you know try to live everybody else's life, we're not going to get anywhere. Carlos Vela has done what he's wanted to do in his life, and I think he's done pretty well. The final game on Sunday then saw Colombia beat Poland by three goals to nil. I tell you what, Stevie, Colombia are better when they've got eleven men, aren't they? I told you that. Oh, I mean, you would never believe me. They look it, great. But they are great because they've got great players as well. They play as a unit. They play as a team. And, and OK, we can turn around today and say they, they won against Poland easily. But you know what? They should have won against Japan with 10 men. So I'm not surprised at what I saw today. They looked superb, didn't they? They did. And they had a little bit of variety in the attack. It didn't just have to go one route. And that's the difference between them and Poland. Poland only had one option, mm -hmm. just pump it long. And when that wasn't working, they, hadn't, they didn't have a backup plan. That's made you feel young watching Poland play, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I, I thought from the get-go they were absolutely magnificent. Hammers w was at it constantly. Falcao uh, along the back line was absolutely superb. Barrios in the middle of the park, his, he had, his legs were incredible. It just covered so much ground. Um, I just thought they were so superior to Poland. Poland were very disappointed. Uh, very poor. Very, very poor. And the yeah. amazing thing is, why, why was Hamish Rodriguez left out in the opening game? That yeah. you can never understand. Um, when, you see, when you see this Colombia team look as good as they are, Poland, on the, on the other hand, as, as you rightly say, I, I'm tempted to say one-dimensional, but I'm not sure that that even does that justice in that they're just trying to get the ball to Lewandowski. Once they had to come out to play, it, it became embarrassing. And, and in the end, um, Col uh, Colombia deserved it and probably could have scored a whole lot more. Uh, let's just take a look then what that means to the group. It was always going to be a tough one to call, even more so now. Take a look at this. Uh, Japan off the draw against Senegal. Level on points with Senegal on four, Colombia on three. The final matches in this group will see Japan take on Poland. You've got to fancy Japan in that one. And then really all to play for as Senegal take on Colombia. Who have you got then, Stevie? 
Uh, I've got Colombia beating Senegal. Yeah. I'm going through. Yeah. Yeah, I was impressed with Senegal in the first game. Uh, they looked disciplined. They played as a team. They were together. And I thought, well, I've not seen this before. But then I, I, I thought today against Japan, they, they looked a little... They, they just looked as though they'd lost concentration from what they did in the first game. So Colombia, as you've seen, I, I, I like Colombia. I fancy Colombia to go a long way in this. So I'm taking Colombia to beat them. Colombia and Japan to go through? Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. As long as the Senegalese goalkeeper doesn't make any huge mistakes. <laughs> I mean, poor guy just you comes out fishing that. for that ball. And had that not happened, Japan would have had to create something on their own. Who have you got going through? Um, as much as I had Senegal. You've got Senegal going through the semifinals, yeah, before? To the quarters. Yes, right. To the yes. quarters. Right. How are you feeling about that prediction? Not comfortable at all. <laughs> I, I, I think Japan get, get the better of of Poland. I think Colombia, without question, the best team in this group. Japan made the most of the break that they got with the sending off. Um, and, and in all honesty, I thought Japan were, were better than Senegal, despite having to come from behind both times. Uh, Colombia, Japan. Yeah, so, I mean, not, not always about it. I mean, to, today, Japan, if they've got to put the ball in the back of the net, with unbelievable chances yep. that they had. I mean, they'd, they'd have been out of sight, but uh, I agree with, with everybody. Well, for a lot more on this game, and indeed a reflection on England's extraordinary win, eh, Paul? Against yeah. Panama, be sure. Jammy. Uh, check out ESPN. <laughs> Jammy. Jammy. <laughs> uh, ESPN FC later today, exclusively on ESPN Plus. Should we take a look at your ratings? Is, yes, please. Has Lingard got the most? Uh, who? No, Harold. Harold. Uh, uh, Harold has got a 10. Well, he's got a hat trick in the World Cup, for goodness sake. What do you want him to give him? Well, no, okay, all right, <laughs> calm down. But Lingard with a 90, you said, was a revelation. He was, he was. Well, the, the, look, when you look at him playing for United, you look at him playing for England, he's, he's what, sensational. What happens when Deli Ali comes back? That's a very good question for Southgate, because I, I, I can't see that uh, Lingard is, is, will be dropped. It's probably going to be lost his cheek. It's great yeah. experience for him, but maybe lost his cheek uh, drops out. But uh, you know, look, change your winning side. It's, it's a big ask. They were fantastic today. Yes, the opposition was poor, but there's some very good performance. What do you do if you're Gareth Southgate going into that final match now against Belgium? Both teams are through. You win. But there's obviously different permutations as to whether or not it could be preferable to finish yeah, second. I, I'm not, what do you do with the, the team? How many changes do you make? How much do you no, think well, about the Number one, if it's me, number one, you find out how fit the lads are. You have a word with the lads, you have a word with the medical team. How, how fit are the lads? Who's on the, on the red, red zone? Nobody's on the red zone gather. OK, let's go and win this game. Because it's all about momentum in the, in the World Cup. We spoke for ad nauseum about the first game, how important in the first game is to get those three points. They got those three points. Then the confidence started to grow. Yes, they're playing Tunisia and Panama, but... When they, when they went into this game today, today, they destroyed this side. And I still think that you want to win the group. You win the group, you get the second place side. I don't think you want to over, overthink it, Danny. I don't think you want to get too excited to in front of But why yourself. can't you? Why can't you think? Well, why you, can't you, you plot? Why look, can't you think, right, actually, I want to, I want to avoid Brazil? No, the, this the, is a free game in some ways. You know, this, this, look, Belgium, a free game. This, this Belgium game is perfect for Gareth Southgate because... He will understand that the opposition hasn't been particularly brilliant. Mm. He will understand that they've been fantastic. Now, coming up against a proper team in Belgium, after this game, he'll find out exactly where they are, whether they're as good as they think they are or whether he needs to tighten up. You know, we've said how great they've been going forward, but that's OK when you're playing against teams who don't have the ability really to hurt you when you lose the ball. But what about looking at the bracket? and thinking what is preferable for England. For example, if yes. they finish second, it could work out for them a lot better. You look at it and it could be a, a nicer run to those semi-finals where in theory you'd meet Spain, as opposed to the opposite end where, you know, it could be Brazil and Germany if, and that stuff. If, if you're in a position where you know exactly where you stand, you know exactly what you have, you know how good you are, you know, you know the best way to play regardless, then if, you, if you're in a position like that, then maybe you can turn around and say, OK, well, maybe if this happens, we'll do that. And if this happens, I don't think England's in that position yet. I think England has to go out with the best side available I and agree. try and beat Belgium. I agree. And if I, they beat Belgium, I don't care if I'm going to Southgate who we get in the next game. Because yep. if I can take care of Belgium, I can take care of yeah, it, pretty it, much I, I all think, the teams I think there are a couple of things at play here. One, one is that I, all things being equal, you go out and you play and to win every single game. Maybe a more experienced team can take that step back, take your foot off the gas, 
and kind of try to read the bracket as it were and then pick the, pick the level back up as needed. This isn't a very experienced team. So you go out, you play, you play to win every single time. The other danger with that is, as you start to look further down the bracket and try to pick and choose which side, which side you're, you're, you're playing on, um, their last games are being played in the morning, and then the group age games, which includes Colombia, Senegal, and Japan, are being, being played later that afternoon. So you're not quite sure who your opponent is yet. You might decide, well, this is the better route for us to go, and then all of a sudden you run up against a Colombia in the round of 16, which you do not want especially when you have a, it could be Japan or Senegal at, at this point, as the others to meet. So you try to read things a little bit too carefully like that, you could find yourselves in even more trouble. Shiak, I don't think you want to get too clever. I, don't, I, that's, I, and I that's think, what I'm saying, don't, I think, I think, it's a win. Look, if I'm Harry Kane, if I'm, as you say, Dele Alli coming back, I want to play Linga. You want to but play... Martinez has come out and said he will make changes. Well, hey, well, well done to him. <laughs> Big deal. I'm not interested in what he wants to do. Mm. If he wants to fiddle with his team, then let him knock himself out because I think it's a mistake. Yeah. I really do because Belgium, let, let's face facts, they haven't played anybody. So you go full on? Yeah. I you, go you, full on. You play the same team. I as absolutely do. And, yeah. and, I, and I go and make a statement and I win the group and whatever comes my way, that's what we yeah. play. Hello and welcome to Extra Time. Hey, is, that, is that who you got this job? Kate McGrath <laughs> is here. How are you, Kate? I wrote that down, by the way. Good, good. Excellent. Three times, good to it. know. <laughs> Lovely. You'll have to listen to the podcast, uh, by the way, if you don't know what we're talking about. What? Hey, well, because right. only some people got what I said before. So, for example, if you're just watching a clip of this online, you don't get all of that, and now you're blabbering on about, is that how you got this job? Do you understand? Oh. 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 Stevie, he just said you were blabbering on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there is the last two Probably months. Right. Said... How are you, Kay? I love that you're putting the pieces together. <laughs> I'm good. We were talking uh, karaoke songs for you on air. What's your go-to? Um... Stevie's is Tom Jones. It's not unusual. All right, all right. Going back, going back. Son of a preacher man. Oh. oh. Fiction. Yeah. Wow. Fiction. I love it. It's not... Unusual. Oh, oh sorry. Here we go. What is it? It's help yourself. Oh, <laughs> oh he's, he's quite clearly sensitive about his uh, song selection. Well, I just like to get things done properly. Well, right, right. quite clearly, quite well, clearly. Fair enough. So I wasn't listening, Stevie. Probably clearly. Knows his job. Uh, Maris, what's up, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Not about this. Tony Bennett. Yes. I told you before. Tony, Tony Bennett. Bennett. <laughs> San Francisco. What's wrong with that? It's a fantastic song. You should know. You've been singing it with me for 20 years. You know? <laughs> You'll do a duet. We do. We actually have done duets. Have you watched your duet thing? Well, we couldn't remember. <laughs> if I, I got you, babe, Sonny and Cher. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be uh, no, we didn't, we didn't go to those ones. No. <laughs> your red face. Oh. Chaka? Anything Bob Marley. Easy. Oh, oh, easy. 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 You got some Bob Marley tattoo, haven't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey. Uh, that's a universal symbol for tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Can we remind Steve that he said Romelu Lukaku wouldn't play for Belgium when he did his World Cup predictions? I never said also, that. Also, Shaka before. said Lukaku wasn't a clean finisher. He's Five not. shots on target, four goals. There's yeah. a big anti Lukaku. Yeah, I'm picking up on that. I never said Lukaku wouldn't play. I did not say that. Okay. I may Apparently, have, I may have, I Peter produces the tape. I may have said something on the lines in jest or being sarcastic. No, but I didn't just take, cover it up. Listen, if he doesn't play, who's going to play? Batch why? He having a laugh. He scored a nice goal, didn't he? Yeah, but he should have scored three before that. No. He's seen three he missed. Well, maybe if he started, be a bit warmer. Oh, ready that, to go. Is that warmer? Yep, ready to go. <laughs> <That warmer. laughs> uh, Shaka, you said Lukaku wasn't a clean finisher. Yes, and I stand by that. But he's got five shots on target and four goals. Against, 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 against Panama and Tunisia. Lukaku's issue has never been about scoring against the small clubs in club football, the small nations international. It's about when you start playing against the, the bigger clubs or nations. Where do you stand in Lukaku? Well, I think he's pretty confident right now. Yeah. Hazard yeah. pulls him aside, said, start to help us, interconnect us a little bit, connect us. And I think he feels good. I mean, usually his first touch is atrocious, right? It's usually oh. like 10 yards away. Mm -hmm. I like, told you that girl knows what she's talking about. <laughs> I told you. Oh, no. But he's confident right now. He's in the zone. It'll be interesting to see what happens mm -hmm. if he plays against England. If, if he has that kind of return against England, if he plays against England, or later on in competition, I will apologize. We will all apologize. 
If he doesn't, I will brag. Let's go to the next one. Why is everyone so afraid to put Crymar in his place? Best player on Brazil could also end it there, run based on selfishness. Why is everybody afraid to put him in his place? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to read it. Where is it? I see that far. Well, the problem is we don't know. Maybe I would be shocked. Sure. Thiago Silva had a word with him, yeah, about right. his language. I'm, just, I'm saying, I, I was just going to say, I, I would be very surprised if there haven't been either players he's playing with or in the squad or some of the coaches, now, even at PSG, haven't said something to him. Mm. Sometimes a guy like him, regardless of how many times he hears it, doesn't really listen to it. We've and, put him in his place here, haven't we? We've yeah. tried. Yeah, he's still doing it, so he obviously doesn't listen to us either. Well, well, Mr. Sislop, right? not happy though with Shaka's attitude. No, sure. was no? Sure. Well, because you said that you shouldn't be crying on the pitch. Yeah. And what was her response? I had to sleep outside. Wow. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's a bit harsh, isn't it? Wow. Drastic. I'm thinking about the underlying issues. So, <laughs> so I thought you were going to say the spare room. She's a big fan of them, are they? Yeah, I wasn't allowed in. Wow. A little man got a Brazil shirt for his birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy Luca, congratulations. Yeah. Yep. Who's his support? I didn't support? mention that so I could get back inside. Oh, there we go. He got a Neymar t-shirt? Uh, just says Brazil. Who's his favourite player? Oh, who knows? But you well, you're his dad. No, seriously. <laughs> Just France, in case you France, needed a it's France and Pogba, <laughs> Harry Kane in England, yeah! Neymar in Brazil. He's got about eight teams in the tournament. Seriously. He's got everybody back. He's, back He's wise. The horse. He's a wise man. Smart man. He backs a winner. Steve Nichol, what do you think of the defending so far in this World Cup? Um, <clears throat> Germany. <clears throat> I think. The fact that the people still regard Boateng as one of the best defenders in the world tells you how bad generally the defending is these days. So, I'll be honest, I've actually been enjoying more of the attack and play, particularly the Mexicans. I, I, I love watching I, I listen, I've, I've never had any sort of thing for, for Mexico before, but the couple of games I've seen, I've enjoyed watching them. So, I've been watching the attacking side of the game, Dan. Because if I watch the defensive side of the game, it gets very frustrating. We're, we were talking oh. uh, earlier, Steve and I, about, about Cooley Bally. Cooley Bally was, has been touted as one of the greatest uh, central defenders in the in the world at the moment. And you know, being touted to go to all the other teams, and you're not having it, you mate. You just you just can't see it. No, he's a good he's, he's a good defender, but he's not he's not there's nothing special about him. You know, you, when somebody says. Oh, this guy's one of the best defenders in the world. You're kind of, you're kind of waiting. Go. I don't see it. He's, he's good compared to everybody else, but well, well, Bayern Munich said they'll take 50 million for Bota, and I bet they will. Say what? <laughs> they get 50 million. It'll be a miracle. It'll so be. Take, take the money off. How has VAR done so far in this World Cup, considering it may have sent Serbia on their way home? I think it's actually been better than I expected. I thought it was going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Be like a clock vampire and suck up games and like ruin the momentum, but it a hasn't. Clock vampire? You like that? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and now it's here. Yeah, I was. Suck! I had, I had, I had, I had to say, suck the what, time up. What did she just say? <laughs> I said it. I can make up words. We just go, <laughs> yeah, we just, we just go with it. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll, I, I, we'll I, connect I was, better I was, in the future. Rolling. We'll I was figure rolling. it out. <laughs> but it hasn't done that. I think it actually it keeps a everything a little, little bit more honest. Mm -hmm. Like when Pepe did that little. Dive, yeah, right yeah. after getting touched. I hate guys like that. I right. hate playing against teams like mm. that. You want nothing about it. So it kind of reigns in the outliers that have been aggressively dirty or engaged in the dark arts on a regular basis. It reigns them in a little bit because Big Brother's watching. Where do you stand on it? I, I like it. Well, I think it's fantastic. Look, look but I, I'm going to hop back to Harry Kane when Harry Kane was pulled in that Tunisia game. I mean, that, that was such an obvious thing to review and they didn't even review it. I mean, so what, it, what it's well, made, what it's well, made people, people do... People were looking at it, weren't they? Uh, yeah, well, what it's made people do, it's made, made defenders and, and players be more aware of what they're doing, which is which is absolutely why it should be there. I mean, look, look the refs, we, we know from past experience, it's very difficult for the refs to see what we see with all the, you know, what is it, 30-odd cameras, 40-odd cameras at this... So they get tremendous views of it. So it's, it's definitive. And I think that's what everybody wants to see. They want to see the right decisions. No? Oh, what are you smirking at? 
I just love <laughs> I liked that you're guessing how many cameras there were. I was very, where are you going to go? All right, two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about this on the show. Uh, Kate, still think England isn't reaching any further than the quarter final. Kate, come Ooh. on now. Come on. Come on now, Kate. Uh, who, 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 I who, think who, that. Who did he get? Does anybody know who's No, they oh, don't so, know yet. So they'll get Colombia or Japan, so they're yeah. the two that advance. Ooh. Depending on how and, they and do it. And then, for example, if they finish first, then they'll face the winner of Brazil and Germany, for example, if that happens. So then the question is, do they want to go second? And then if they tie, it comes down to yellow cards. I well, they want Japan. But it's after that. Yeah, right? after that, forget it. <laughs> I don't know. Not after seeing this Germany against Harry Kane, that back line against Harry Kane. They want to. How dangerous are the Germans going to be now? Mm. How many times in previous World Cup? I mean, you used to talk about it. Italy is a great example. They always started horrible <laughs> and. And then just built up and got better and more solid and it just got galvanized. And that Tony Cruz goal is the very thing that can just completely turn things upside down. We know, we know Stevie hates England. Yeah. You love England. <laughs> hold on, hold well, on, hold on. I, hold on. I, why think they have a I wonder why that is. I dislike them a lot more than hate, by the way. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Get it right. Get it. Let's be, let's be very, spot on. Where do you that. stand on England, Kate? I think they have a chance. Do you, no, do you support them or are you yes. against them? I support teams that play positive football. Oh, well done, Kate. I, I do. No matter what the team is, I always support anyone. The manager comes in, changes things up, playing a 3-5-2, playing a beautiful attacking soccer, lots of runs from the midfield. It's set up to make other people shine. I like what he's done. I'm excited to watch them go further. Chat, you played for England, of course, back in the day. Me? Really? Yes. Oh, no one in 23 is a kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you've done. Really? You've leveled yeah. back in the day. Yeah. As an overage yeah, player. So, so, so where do you stand on your support? I don't care. What, what you must, no, but you must watch a game, for example, and support or not. Nope. You don't. You don't have a horse. You don't root for the team. Nope. You just enjoy the soft. You like Stuart Robson. Yeah. Oh. What if England play against Mexico? Who do you support? I support Mexico. Why? Concacaf. I'm supporting CONCACAF teams, I'm one of them! You, but you play for England on the 23, so what's your allegiance? You couldn't care. I, could, I don't care about England. Right. That was the question. So why are you getting all upset about them? No, I'm upset. <laughs> no, I'm upset. No, upset. This is me calm. <laughs> you. I can't believe you. You support Mexico, I can't right, believe you said that. I, I can't. Yeah. Okay, you support Mexico as well because of CONCACAF? Yeah, but between, between those two? Yeah. Absolutely. England and Mexico are pretty nice. Wow. Just That's why I would just lost a couple of minutes. <laughs> you were it. You England. Yeah, right. Uh, that is it. Uh, we'll be back. That's it. Uh, we're back. Are you working tomorrow, Paul? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> I said, me too. I'm coming. Uh, I'm coming in. Hold on. Let me, hold on. Let me check if I'm working. <laughs> uh, no, you see, no. you've got, you got a golf day tomorrow, yeah? I have, I. Do you not oh. remember? Do you not remember you had a golf day? What are you looking up there for then? Uh, okay, you're back. Oh, so you, <laughs> so you look to see if you were work in the morning. Uh, no, you, you can't. I believe it's contractual. Uh, ESPN FC returns then tomorrow with everybody but Stevie. Uh, of course, it is available every day now exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. If you were to search Bruce Arena on Twitter at the moment, there are some interesting comments regarding comments that he made earlier today after England's victory over Panama. These were those comments... The things that happened today with Panama were typical of CONCACAF competition, but they're never punished for it. In my view, the officiating hurts the progress of the region. You'd have to be hit over the head with a sledgehammer for them to give a penalty kick in CONCACAF. I feel strongly that we should have been the third team, but we have no one to blame but ourselves and the officials and the sledgehammers. Look, the, the, the truth of the matter is, without question, U.S should be there. And he's absolutely right. They only have themselves to blame. When you consider that Panama finished third, Honduras finished fourth in CONCACAF World Cup qualifying, and the U.S. beat Panama 4-0 at home, beat Honduras 6-0 at home, the reason they're not there is because they go to everywhere else and expect them to turn over, expect them to lie down and, and think that the result somehow magically appears. The one thing I will say about CONCACAF is yes, no, or, or, or no, nobody's doing that. You've got to earn your result. Four years ago, you beat Costa Rica at home with a game that should have been called off because of the weather, but yet nobody complains about that, yet somehow you find some kind of mystery to justify why you aren't there this time around. Listen, you're not there because you didn't deserve to be there. You're not there because you lose a way to a second string trying to bagel. 
Stop making excuses. Stop pointing fingers. Somebody please accept responsibility until somebody does. Unfortunately, the U.S. men's national team cannot get out from under that embarrassment. Chaka hits up, ladies and gentlemen. Well said, mate. Maris? Look, but before the advent of VAR coming into the game, you knew when you were going away, whether it was your club team or your international team, if you're away from home, you knew you were not going to get the calls. So you had to be good enough. You had to, you know, possess the ball. You had to work your way through, through the game. You knew there was going to be a, a, an advantage given to the home side. So I don't know what Bruce is talking about. I, I just let, let sleeping dogs lie. Look, just get over it. Get on to the next cycle and, and get, them, get them progressing to the World Cup next time. At the end of the day, you can't blame referees. You, you blame coaches. Who, who was coaching these players? You know, if I'm coaching a team, I go through set pieces and I show them how I want them to defend. And it certainly doesn't involve wrestling with the opposition. So, you know what? I'm not so sure it's referees you blame. It's, it's coaches. That is the problem in CONCACAF. Clearly, the teams in CONCACAF aren't good enough. You've got one team in Mexico who have actually surprised us how good they've been. Yep. That means that it's the players and it means it's the coaches are not coaching the players properly. Sure. So, you know, you can't blame the referees. It's, a lot of it is coaches and half of it is players. Here's the thing that continues to infuriate me about this lack of accepting of responsibility. This is the same Bruce Arena making these ridiculous statements that sat in the pregame press conference in Trinidad and Tobago and said, I would like to see one of these European teams come here to yes. CONCACAF yeah. and qualify. Yeah. Now yeah. you turn that around to say, after one of the CONCACAF teams who did qualify concedes six against one of those said European teams, now it's on the referees. No, it, you can't have it both ways. You do not have some kind of divine right to be at a World Cup or to even get out of CONCACAF, whatever it may be, stop playing everybody else for fools. Please, stop. Thank you very much, Shaka. Cheers, Stevie and Paul. Of course, for a lot more on this, uh, keep it here on the website. And ESPN FC is with you every day, of course, reflecting on the World Cup uh, exclusively on ESPN+. This is nuts. If you haven't seen Whoa. this, uh, during a game, fourth division oh, wow. game, wow. Yeah, a kangaroo gets itself onto the plane. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's just chilling in the sunshine. The but how you, what, what hey. do you do a kangaroo? Good save. So why are they encouraging it? What do you mean? Well, I got still. He doesn't want one ready yet. So he's look, 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 hey, look, he's how fast, look how fast he goes, by the way. Look how, look how everybody's running. Look, look. <laughs> there you are. Tell you what. Nobody even spots the forward run. What are we oh, doing? Yeah. Defending these days. But they're quite violent, aren't they? So what can you do with it? Well, do exactly what run the doing. opposite direction. Uh, <laughs> Just run it over with a pickup, apparently. See, you corral it and then. Oh, yeah, what would you have been doing, Steve? You corral it with what? Exactly what I would have done. What, run out of the way? Corral it. You've got to make a noise and... Uh, Listen, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> what, what, what? What kind of noise Listen. scares it? What kind of noise hey, scares a kangaroo? Boom! Boom. Boom. I don't remember. <laughs> it's as scared of you as you are of it. So what noise are you making? I don't know about that. Any noise to keep it away. Like what? I need like an example what? of the noise. Like what? I thought you were going to corral like it. You were going to corral it. Noise. You what do? Like what? You oh, don't what? even need to make a noise and just corral it. Hey! There it is! And it's a corner.